actually going to end us here. Uh, one of the first things to notice about an affinity diagram is that you need to provide people with more time than they think they need. Um, things, you know, at about five minutes, you guys were sort of, you know, slowing down and settling back. And at that point, I said, you have five more minutes. Um, you know, you, you have double the time that you've already used. And that's actually an important part of the affinity diagram because the, there's some quick and easy answers which may not necessarily be the best answers. Because you guys were still moving things around, if we were doing this in an actual business setting, I probably would have given at least five to perhaps even 10 more minutes um, to keep working on this. There's the more time is better when you're doing this group thinking in, into the affinity diagrams. But we're on a class schedule and I have enough here to be able to move on to the next step of the affinity diagram process. I can't tell if you're saying infinity or affinity. 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 A okay. And it's, uh, oh, you don't have your readers yet. Right. So <laughs> when you get your reader, you'll have, there's a whole okay. section in the, in the reader about affinity diagrams. So what we've just been doing is looking for affinities in these concepts. So the groupings are, are the affinities. That, that we're looking for. So the next step, actually the first thing I'll ask is bring it up to the meta level for a minute and just talk about, well, what was it like to be in a group of people that was moving moving these around without without speaking about what it was like? Frustrating. Oh, really thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. ah, okay, interesting. Okay. I actually thought it was a clever way to start the round because you you, everybody could do it and nobody could tell you not to uh -huh. and you could make your opinion felt by putting it in a place and somebody else could make their opinion felt by moving mm -hmm. so it was a nice non-combative not way to kind of at least have well I think this and you don't like it that's okay but I have told you that yeah. I think this I've got my opinion out there so so to uh, not there. Some of these are kind of old post-its, so um, the, yeah, fresh post-its are nice for this exercise. Okay, so uh, I, at one level, frustration, you know, I knew where this should go mm -hmm. and somebody else is moving it, and at the same time, validation, I got to make my uh, opinion known whether it's it stayed there or not. Or back and forth opinion. Yeah. 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 Are you spiting me? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> kind of some aggressive. Oh, this is a competitive class. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Even the ones where they delay for a while and they say, I want to go back and switch it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And it's just, we just, I do this at work and, and it's nice knowing that you can make the move and if the president decides, no, that's not what we're going to do. In other words, it's, it's flexible. It's, it's a democracy. Mm -hmm. Everybody can kind of make make their own decision. Yeah. That, that democratic kind of process among the group kind of mm -hmm. leads to probably a better result than having one person that kind of stands above it all and says right. no. And you bring up an important point. If you're in a very hierarchical organization, you may want to encourage the person at the top of that hierarchy to actually not participate in this because the the weight of their opinion may be so heavy that no one has the guts to move a sticky that, that they put up there. Now there's plenty of organizations where the the head person has done such a good job of empowering everyone in the organization that they would feel fine about moving that sticky. Um, so if you're coming in from the outside as a consultant, you might want to try to get a feel for that about, you know, is this a place where if the boss is at the at the wall, what's going to happen is is what that person, the choices that that person makes, as opposed to actually getting the whole group to participate. I think that answers one of the stickies too. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, and it, politics will be a theme that we talk about through the course. How do, how do we manage that? How do we make politics? Well, business environment protocol. I think that, that would kind of fall into that. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, any other questions about this part of the process? Well, it's not a, so much a question, but AJ and I had the immediate response of, well, let's put up title categories, which would make it easier. Because what I was saying initially was, you're doing the same thing over here that this group's doing, but we can't even see uh -huh. that far across the board. Uh -huh. So it's, it's just an observation, but I, I, I realize the, the exercise, but I think later on you want to say, okay, what do these groups mean? Which is actually the next step in the process. <laughs> They but by doing well. titles first, yeah. you would have limited what well, groups you need. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which brings, you know, everyone's definition of organization is different. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people like would just go by techniques. I found myself doing other people's technique. And then other people, personal growth got confusing because people were putting growth to money and they're moving and they kept moving back and forth, I just noticed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and so the, the hope is that a consensus eventually evolves you hope that it's not merely a consensus of frustration, you know, well, this thing has moved around too much and I'm just going to check out, you know, ideally you don't want that to happen. But, um, you, so you, you know, the idea is that you try to keep your group engaged in the process. One thing that's fairly important is actually keeping everyone at the board. Um, sometimes, especially people who, um, who are kind of checked out of the process, they may go up and they'll move a couple and then they'll go back and sit down. And so you need to kind of gently and kindly encourage those people, no, nope, you know, you need to stay with the process until it's done and, and your opinion matters. You know, so please stay with it and please um, keep moving things around. Okay, so we'll, we'll go ahead and do the next part. We'll, uh, we'll do at least a few of them. So this is that another group process. It's not the facilitator's job to say what's the title for these groupings, I have no idea. What? <laughs> um, so you guys are the ones who put things together. So you need to help the facilitator to say, okay, what is the title? Because now we can title these. Now that through the group process, they've turned into some kind of order, um, now we can title them. So let's start out over here. Uh, we have a, a grouping of Techniques for defining project success, techniques, formal process, techniques for juggling competing projects, and reducing the overwhelm to steps. What, what's, the, what's the thing that ties, I mean, and is this part of it or is this its own? Solid understanding of project management concepts. Floater. Floater. I think it's just focused on process. Uh -huh. Process driven. Def yeah, a defined formal process. In place. Yeah, so sometimes there's a, there's one that actually sort of looks like the title. <coughs> okay, so now we've got a nice big one. Is this part of this? Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. Right next to that one. Okay, great. I, I think the title is the top one. So I actually thought it was personal and professional growth. I thought well, it was yeah. just personal. I was thinking of that pretty much as just a personal growth. Yeah. Like and not, not about you. It's, it's about, about how you take it into your personal life. Right. It's, it's not if it's work related, it's just yeah, has you as an individual. So we see how I saw that. Confidence, yeah. decision making, yeah. confidence, knowledge, um, uh, effective communication between different departments. I, you know, this, this sounds more like the professional side of it. Uh, sense of accomplishment, share successes and failures, focus, um, and in, improving interpersonal skills. Yeah, I don't even think developing a skill check really belongs there. It's not, that, that to me is far, those are the tangible skills that you learn. That to me is you know, a skill set. You learn the skills, whereas your professional personal growth has a lot to do with how you're feeling, mm -hmm. you know, your self-confidence, your ability to communicate, mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff that's just a little bit more, I think, um, not so easy to learn from reading. Mm -hmm. How should be on the formal process, maybe? Well, we're actually, I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna move them now, um, but I, is, is this okay as a, as a title? Yeah. And we're going through this a little bit faster than one would um, 
in a, a formal, if you're actually doing it with a, a group in a, in an organization. But, and it depends on the type of pro problem that you're solving as to how much time you'll spend on doing the headings. Uh, and if you're dealing with a very controversial is issue, the headings may be very important uh, because that's where you're going to focus your attention from now on. Um, for us, we're going to uh, use this as a way to, for you guys to evaluate me at the end of the course. Uh, I'll write this up and make it available to us. And at the end of the course, we're going to check back to it and see, okay, how, how did we do collectively and how did I do in terms of making this information available to you?